From SPI's Executive Briefing Center in Dallas, Texas, the most watched and listened to content in B2B sales and marketing, it's the SBI Podcast with your host, Matt Shares. Welcome to SBI TV, a weekly show dedicated to helping you make your number. Today, we're going to explore the true meaning of customer experience. What a topic. I'm your host, Matt Shares. I'm the CEO of SBI. Joining us in the studio today is Brad Christian. Brad's the Chief Customer Officer of Market Force Information. Market Force serves multi-location businesses by providing a wide array of customer experience management solutions, analytics, and reporting technology. If you think about their solutions, they help clients protect their brand reputation, they delight them, and make them more money. So Brad, first off, welcome to the show. Thanks, Matt, great to be here. Yeah, good to see you. So I think as a way of getting started, it would be great for you just to give the audience a little bit of a history lesson on you, kind of how you ended up in the, in the CCO role, and then I'll have you talk about market force and what you do and how maybe the audience should think about you. Sure, so obviously Brad Christian, I'm our Chief Customer Officer and uh, have been with the company for about 13 years now and work with our existing clients, uh, working, walking them through best practices and some of the innovations in the space as well as uh, responsibility for our new business development team in terms of acquiring additional new clients. Great. I work in our uh, Atlanta, Georgia uh, global headquarters office. Okay. But then you, and you guys are global as a company, correct? correct. Okay. And then <clears throat> if I was not familiar with market force, right? Where would I bump into your solutions? What would be an example where I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. So market force provides a, a variety of what we refer to as customer experience solutions. These are a variety of different measures that we use to help different brands uh, evaluate how they're executing against customer expectations. And, and kind of our secret sauce and what makes us different is we have a large variety of those measures uh, and then uh, a sophisticated analytics process that allows us to tie the results from those measures to financial performance to help our, our clients really understand three critical things. One, what matters most to their customers? Where do they have gaps in execution? And ultimately, what's the financial ROI they can derive by taking on one initiative over another? Okay. And would you be seeing more in um, other certain verticals or certain end markets where we might bump into you more? I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is I think about anybody that's in the restaurant and food business. Right. Like yeah. you're there yeah. checking, validating experience, driving sort of post experience, text messages, that whole mm -hmm. ecosystem. Is that, that a fair yeah, restaurant. pedestrian representation yeah. that I'm giving? Yeah, yeah. Restaurants, retailers, supermarket, uh, convenience stores. Okay. Uh, those kinds of businesses are, are big users of our service. Great business. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So Brad and I are going to have a great time talking about customer experience because I think he's going to be able to teach us a lot. So if you're watching or listening and you don't want to miss any of uh, the shows that SBI produces, to access our content library, if you're an iPhone user, all you have to do is download the SBI app via the Apple Store, search for Sales Benchmark Index, set up your notifications, and then we can keep you company as you commute, as you travel, or maybe your morning workout. So, customer experience, it's all the rage, right? Software vendors, consulting companies, my firm, we all talk about it. The CMOs and CEOs tell the marketplace why their experience is superior to competition. But in many ways, we suffer from this definitional crisis because it means different things to different people. I think Brad is uniquely, and I believe you're uniquely qualified to educate all of us <laughs> around this concept of what it truly means, right? right. Especially consumer markets are hyper-focused on it. They typically lead the way around versus you know business-to-business -business organizations. Right. So I guess as a way of getting started, how do you think about measuring customer expectations and kind of set that foundation for us, and then you and I can sort of pick off some use cases as we go through the show. And I think that's a great way to start the conversation. Um, you know, from our perspective, the cu customer experience really uh, is derived from two very different uh, lenses. You know, how a business executes on its brand standards, how it operationalizes and consistently delivers against uh, the, those customer expectations, is critically important. So, you know. Uh, what's the experience that uh, takes place when the customer first comes to your website? Um, you know, what's their first interaction when they walk into a store? The interaction with the, the, the sales personnel, what that sales process is like. Those are, uh, you know, having a very operational perspective on whether you are or are not executing on your brand promise. Uh, and that's typically captured through uh, a mystery shopping program, the ability to walk in and, you know, kind of inspect what you expect as a yeah. business. But that's half the equation. 
The other half of the equation is how do consumers react to those operational execution? Uh, how do I feel? Uh, and, and, and a big part of that is using survey programs to get at you know, uh, overall how satisfied are customers with the experience, you know, how likely are they to return, how likely are they to recommend you to friends, family members, and colleagues. And so it's the combination of the operational and the experiential measures that really um, define what customer experience measurement is. So, <clears throat> Brad, I um, often see it in the you know, almost 14 years we've been doing this, for B2B companies, when we ever use the term mystery shop mm. and sort of go through a customer experience, when we first meet a, a client or a prospective client and we explain that we sort of emulate the buyer's journey, mm. they get stuck, try to envision how we do that. Mm -hmm. They typically go, okay, in a consumer environment, that totally makes sense, but how do you do it in a business-to-business -business environment? Like, what's it like to engage with a rep? When I fill out a contact me form mm -hmm. on a business-to-business -business website, right. how long till somebody engages? What's the interaction like? Do yeah. they send me content? Is it custom? So we do all that and they go, I get it. So that's a lead-in because most of the people watching this show are business-to-business -business leaders like you, chief commercial officers, CEOs, CMOs. Sure. Talk a little bit about some of the different types of mystery shops that you guys see, do, and maybe how you might recommend folks think about that view? Well, it's interesting. You gave great examples. So when you talk about B2B, we have clients today that want to understand, okay, so you hit my website and you did the contact me or you filled out the form. You know, How long was it until we got contact? Did you uh, get talked about this promotion over that promotion. When you started to go down a path towards a certain product, did you get this reaffirming value proposition established? Did they ask for the sale? Did they invite you to, to transact with them, bring you down to the store? Whatever those things are, all those operational uh, yes, no kinds of questions um, get evaluated in that process. And that's so important because so many times, you know, there isn't an objective lens into execution. Yep. And as I think I remember in some of your content, it's all it's all about execution right. because without it, you, your business is suck, struggles, and that's where the rubber hits the road or meets the road in terms of you know do we execute on the brand promise? We have a an idea here in the corporate office about what we're supposed to be doing, yeah. but does my frontline staff, does my business, does the model support and align to that? Okay, so I get that. What if we go maybe I guess a level down? A lot of people have contact centers call centers, sure. right? Centralized folks, and they're thinking about this inbound motion and how does it feel and how are we doing? Do you have a different view? Is there a different mechanism that you guys use to help companies understand how that's working? Because it has a, I guess, a, a sort of negative, ooh, here comes a call center. Right. Yeah. What's that experience like? Yeah. Well, no, it's, 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 you're right. I mean, the majority of inbound traffic that we would see in our contact center services for our clients is majority it's complaints. It's folks that had, there was a defect in the process in the system and I'm calling to complain about it. But, uh, uh, and, and just, there are informational calls where I just want to clarify, you know, this topic and believe it or not, there is a small percentage of customers that call to compl compliment corporations and, and how they, the experience and, and we call those praise calls. But, even though people might say, oh, this is just a bunch of complaints, in the customer experience realm, we see a tremendous amount of value in those complaints because it's important to understand what's being complained about. And in terms of the order of magnitude, is this the number one complaint by a long shot? Is it one of four things that we consistently see? Yeah. And how do we understand how we're executing across the different touch points? Because if we see there's certain topics that are getting complained about consistently, then you drill down one level more to say, where is that being where is that a problem? Right. So even though, like you said, it's it's sort of mm, it, there's great data in there, and at the end of the day, and, and I'm sure you'll get to it in a bit, is how much data is being created by companies today, and how do you leverage that data asset to get to some insight? Right. Okay. So then my last question in this segment around expectations, and you had mentioned patterns. So now I'll go to social. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even sure how to think about like the social media monitoring, especially for some of the consumer companies. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a huge task. And I know people do it and they do it well. Mm -hmm. What's market forces, what's your opinion relative to social and how people should think about that from a CX standpoint? Well, we're seeing social media just explode and, and um, uh, there was a time when it was just a channel where there was communication and you might say something about a brand mm -hmm. and it was just sort of you complaining to the marketplace about it and that was it. But um, we're seeing brands be very intentional now and watching for that and, and engaging. And in fact, uh, the social media uh, practice really is two things. The first is 
looking at ratings and you know the numbers, the the one stars, the two stars, the three stars on Yelp, Google, Facebook, yep. uh, TripAdvisor, et cetera, because those those numbers mean something, and it gets back to that data asset. So you know. Trying to figure out what's the value of an extra half a star in your aggregate ratings. That's a that's an important part, and we just you know refer to that as social ratings. But the other piece that I alluded to just a moment ago is the social media monitoring, or what maybe people call social care. It's actually waiting for a consumer uh, to say, "I had a really bad experience with brand." Mm. And they, the consumer now doesn't just do that because they they want to get something off their chest. They're actually saying, "Hey, brand, react to me." I'm complaining about you. I actually want you to engage me, yeah. almost as if I picked up the phone to call you yep. and talk to your contact center agent. And so the companies that are, most companies are starting to pick up on this and they're they're deploying, you know, we do a lot of this work and it's growing dramatically with a lot of our client base, but even companies that don't work with us understand the value of, you know, trying to get something before it goes viral, trying to talk to a consumer, make sure they take that offline, resolve it, and I guess call it customer recovery trying to recover that customer so you protect the lifetime value of that, that person. That term, social care, I love that. So what about the B2B world? Do you have a recommendation or advice for those that are watching that are more B2B oriented, which is a greater part of our audience relative to social care and adopting some of these best practices that you see? Yeah, all brands are uh, have the opportunity to benefit or or not yeah. from from the reality that social media is everywhere and that uh, people are on it commenting constantly. So yeah. even B two B businesses that have people that might get on a social channel and talk about them need to be listening. Okay, helpful. All right, um, a big thank you to Brad for for coming by the studio and sharing his wisdom relative to customer experience. Um, as you could tell, I was taking notes, so there was some good learning going on. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, it's always a gift to be able to spend time, and I appreciate your eyes and your ears. Um, Brad, once again, thank you for your generosity and continued success to you and the Market Force team. Likewise. And for those of you out there, um, we wish you good luck as you try and make your number. This has been the SBI Podcast. For more information on the studio, SBI's Executive Briefing Center, our team, or to schedule a workshop, please visit salesbenchmarkindex.com.